Yes, Gawa. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another Yaskawa Motion Applications Group webinar. Nishant's going to discuss some of the uh, uh, performance and robustness techniques. Let's talk about task timing in uh, the IEC controllers. Uh, most of you who've used uh, uh, either Express or Pro for MotionWorks IEC have uh, gone into their uh, resource and set your task updates for a uh, single task in MotionWorks IEC Express and for multiple tasks in uh, MotionWorks IEC Pro. Um, and, and to set the task, just, this is just a, a rundown on how this is set in the very basic terms. So if you, if you right click on a particular task, there is an option for you to set the update interval. And uh, there are three things that the user has to define in here, the interval, uh, the priority of the task that you are trying to control, and also the watchdog time. The priority for IEC application tasks uh, can be set from 0 to 16. The smaller this number, the higher priority it has in execution order. And we also recommend setting your watchdog time to be equal to the interval that you set in the first field. And this is because you want the watchdog timer to time out and cause a watchdog if your code is not completed in the interval that you set. And that is important because since this is a cyclic um, uh, task, you want to make sure that all the code you have in that task gets executed on time. So it is always recommended to set the watchdog time to be equal to your interval. Further details of task uh, of the various tasks, such as um, uh, you know, the, the Modbus or uh, Ethernet IP and um, other tasks that um, are currently running on your IEC controller can be seen in section 1.12 of the hardware configuration help. So if you look, look at the help, you'll, you'll basically find uh, the various uh, tasks and how they're set up and their priorities um, within, within your project. Here's a screenshot of an example application which has three application tasks. First one is a uh, fast task with priority zero. Second one is a medium task with priority seven. And uh, last one is a slow task with priority 15. Uh, the first thing, the first row that is being used for task timing is the Mechatrolink and Motion Engine uh, task update. And that has highest priority. The user cannot do anything to control that the Mechatrolink and Motion uh, Engine takes up uh, the highest priority. Uh, in, in this example, we basically set it up such that uh, it has, for example, two millisecond update rates. Um, and uh, the fast task is set at four millisecond update rates. You can see that every two milliseconds, the, the Mechatrolink or Motion Engine task, uh, it's called an ISR task in MotionWorks IEC. It trumps over all other tasks and runs which means it has the capability to interrupt every other application task in the project. Next in priority comes the uh, fast task. And you can see that the fast task uh, runs as soon as the Mechatrolink or Motion Engine task is done. And since it was uh, set for a four millisecond update, you can see every four milliseconds after the Mechatrolink task, the fast task starts running. The next in priority is a medium task in this particular example. And the medium task starts as soon as the fast task is done, but the medium task gets interrupted by the fast task and the Mechatrolink task if required. You can see here in this particular example in the third uh, scan, the third Mechatrolink scan, you can see that the medium task was interrupted both by the fast task and the Mechatrolink, Mechatrolink task. And, and so the priority basically drops down from there. Um, there are also default tasks that are being run in the controller. It is recommended not to set any of your application tasks to the default task or the background task as it's called. This is only for functions like the web server or the hardware configuration to connect. And that, that the, the default tasks are run only when application tasks and all of the tasks have finished their running. So there is a high chance that these may never get done since they're not uh, backed up by watchdog timers. So far on uh, 
MPIC controllers, users have been able to see their uh, tasks and the timing for their tasks using some of the variables that were available in the global variable list. However, these uh, task timings were in milliseconds. So if you actually, today, if you actually click on any one of these um, available task timing uh, information or EXT task info type variables from the global variable list, you would be able to see the, uh, the, the real time uh, it takes for each of these tasks to run in milliseconds. That may not be good enough for uh, for what you're trying to do or what you're trying to analyze uh, as far as how much time it takes for each um, uh, each task. It, it, in, in a sense, it's basically been uh, based on the Mechatrolink uh, resolution for uh, Proconos-based controllers, which are the 2300 SIEC and the 2310 IEC controllers. Uh, starting in MotionWorks IEC 2.5, in the global variable worksheet, there are two new data types that have been added. They're called high-risk task timing info array and sys timing info array. And these two, these two new data types basically give us the ability to look at the task timing in microseconds. So all your 16 application tasks are available in, in this variable. It's an array, so you have 16 elements in that array and, and these are structures in those arrays as well. The, the uh, Mechatrolink or Motion Engine update can be seen again in microseconds using this data type sys timing info. Again, this is a structure which you can pull into uh, the watch window or uh, plot using the logic analyzer to see how much time in real time it is taking for each of those tasks to run. Now, uh, for ECLR based controllers, which are the 2600 IEC and the MP3000 series IEC controllers, uh, the, the, the 16 task, um, 16 application tasks, task timings were already available in microseconds. The new uh, data type that has been added to the ECLR type controllers is the sys timing info uh, variable, which gives you the, uh, the uh, DP RAM or Mechatrolink 3 motion engine uh, update. Uh, and, and you can do it through uh, this new variable. Uh, let me also add that if you're not using MotionWorks IEC 2.5, if you're using a prior version of uh, MotionWorks IEC, you can still add these variables of these particular data types into the global variable uh, worksheet and still be able to get the, uh, get the data since these are or were supported by, uh, by the controller firmware even prior to uh, 2.5 uh, firmware. So even if you had uh, older firmware and older uh, software, you can still see it by adding these variables in these particular data types and at these particular addresses to see the task timing updates in real time. Uh, like I said before, you can add these variables to the uh, watch window or to the logic analyzer. And uh, once you add it, um, you can choose which task you want to view. And uh, like I said before, these are arrays, so you have uh, arrays starting from 1 all the way to 16 and uh, the first one corresponds to the first task that you have in your resource. So in your controller if you have a fast task, that fast task is the first one in, 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 in order in your task list, then that is the first element of the array that you will be seeing uh, or, or you will be referring to when you're adding it to the watch window or to the logic analyzer. The second one would correspond to the second uh, array or second structure here, the third one would be the third one. The, the initializing uh, task or the, the start task uh, is not going to show up in the uh, task info array here. So here's an example of uh, an application where I have three tasks, a fast task, a medium task, and a, low ta and a slow task. The, the first one is my Mechatrolink update. And you can see there are various variables that are available to monitor of the, the variable here, current duration in microseconds. There is a min duration in microseconds and a max duration in microseconds. Uh, it's when this max duration overshoots the uh, set interval that the watchdog uh, fires and, and causes a watchdog alarm. So you can see here my, uh, my uh, update period is set to uh, two milliseconds. My watchdog is also set to two milliseconds. The priority is zero. Uh, it 
currently, when my application is at standstill, when, when there, all the axes are at standstill, it takes uh, an average about, of about 116 microseconds out of the 2,000 microseconds available for this fast task. As soon as motion is commanded, you can see here uh, that the fast, fast task uh, duration, the current duration has gone up since motion is being commanded. And uh, the max duration, there was a spike in my uh, maximum duration that task took uh, of almost 10 times. Uh, but also interesting here to note is that it pushed up my um, the maximum duration and the current duration for my medium task. You can see here that it almost doubled for the medium task. And the reason is because since the fast task is taking more time to run, the medium task gets interrupted multiple times or more number of times. And that basically uh, drives up the time it takes for a medium task. So if your medium task is not spaced out properly, you could have, uh, you could be squeezing the medium task for time if even though the fast task is okay in terms of interval. So it, it is recommended to basically look at these uh, task updates to see if each of your tasks is getting enough time to run. And uh, here's an explanation of, uh, of how it happens graphically. So here's the, uh, the same uh, table I had in the previous worksheet or previous slide uh, with, the, with the durations before the task were, or before the motion was executed. And you can see here the red shows the uh, Mechatrolink uh, task, which is not user defined. Uh, my fast task is in the yellow and it takes a very uh, small amount of time for the fast task. But the green shows the medium task, and uh, the medium task got interrupted at least once before motion was uh, running. You can see that 2729 microseconds for the medium task is when it was interrupted once. And uh, the uh, slow task was interrupted again once uh, in, in this whole process. But as soon as motion was commanded, you can see that the uh, the fast task for at least one scan took quite a lot of time. It, it took about uh, a little greater than one millisecond. And uh, because of that, the medium task got squeezed. And, and it basically got interrupted multiple number of times, which is why the medium task now takes more time to run or took more time to run. The same information can be obtained uh, or can be seen using the, uh, the logic analyzer. So if you look at this, uh, you can see that motion did not really cause too much of a spike or too much extra burden on your uh, Mechatrolink uh, scan. But for the fast task, as soon as motion was commanded, uh, you can see that uh, this, this motion involved a cam shift and a, a cam in execute. So you can see that as soon as the, the motion was started, uh, the current duration of the average time it takes for the fast task to run was higher. The medium task now started getting interrupted by the fast task, which is why you see more uh, spikes on it. The slow task was not really affected because there was not a lot of code running in the slow task. And, you can, and this is a good representation of what happens when, when different events are fired or different uh, uh, motion uh, events are fired within the application program. Nishant, before you go on, uh, some users are confused if they have a watchdog that they don't see a very large number in the max duration field. And that's because if there was a watchdog, uh, the controller faulted before it would have posted the max duration value. Yeah, so uh, it is after the watchdog has happened, it would be impossible to go and look at your uh, task timing because it's, it's a frozen image of what, what was completed successfully. It does not show you what it could not do, but it, it basically shows you what it successfully did. So if you get a watchdog, uh, this would not be a good area to look in. This is a good area to look at how much time you have left on, a, on an average, how much time it takes for each task to run. So you can basically plan on uh, unforeseen events happening in your, in your, uh, in your project. Uh, also of importance is if you have loops running inside the project with, with calculations and, and multiple loops running inside your project, you can look at these numbers to figure out if those loops are growing in, in uh, in uh, executions or, uh, or if they're basically staying at a steady state value. So this is a great troubleshooting tool to figure out. And we've, we've had multiple such cases where uh, wrong, improper coding caused loops to basically um, uh, loop and loop and, and increase in number. 
uh, increase in execution number. So this is a, a great troubleshooting um, tool to see how long your task is taking currently.